Hello and welcome to the Dream Receiver Show. So happy that you tuned in today. We have Farzana Jaffer Shiraj, and she is a keynote speaker, author, coach, hypnos hypnosis master, trainer, meditator, laugh snorter, <laughs> got to witness that, um, nerd foodie, quotaholic, scrabbler, yogi, ex model, professional ass kicker. Please give us a warm <laughs> welcome for Farzana Jaffer Jaraj. <laughs> Thank you for saying my name so well. <laughs> it's beautiful. Oh my gosh, that is so funny. <laughs> and then right at the beginning, you're actually doing the laugh with the, <laughs> with the snort. snort. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's real. That's it's real. Really, really good. <laughs> fun, fun. So I want to first talk to you about this great book that you got and how you started and what inspired you to do this meditation. To, to, to write the book. Okay, let's start with just inspired to do meditation. Well, I, you can actually blame my mom or credit <laughs> my mom. I was raised in a community and religion um, where the Sufi type of meditation was really prevalent and it's optional. It's not something that you have to do. But there, they had this week when I was really young and it's a student's week and they get all the kids to come and participate and get exposed to it. And my mom took me and I, I actually thought I was older, but it turns out I was three years old. And my mom took me to my first meditation and I remember waking up like, you know, 3.30 in the morning, having a cup of tea. And I just remember, like if you've ever woken up in the morning, it's not the same feeling as when you stay up all night. And so, I remember waking up and everything, it's just like, you're in this kind of blanket of sleepiness, but everything in your mind feels so sharp and so clear. And I could sense the sleepiness of people around me. And I just knew that something was gonna happen. It was like the hairs on the back of my neck were on high alert. And I remember as we drove to the mosque, I could sense that we were like, if, if the ocean was that calm surface, of, and everyone below it was sleeping. We were like a ripple on the surface of the water as we drove there. And I can remember my first meditation and going into this dark little room and my mom kind of saying, hey, take these beads and just say this little prayer again and again. And I was like, and something didn't feel right about it. And so I sat in the room and I just had this moment where I kind of closed my eyes and I sensed what I perceived, and I was like a little kid, but it was what I perceived as the universe. And I just said, so what, what should I do? And this corridor kind of appeared in my mind like, like this in front of me, and it narrowed at a little point and it just expanded into the universe. And I mean, I was three, so I didn't have a lot of thoughts, but the thoughts that I did have would come and they would hold, pause in that little narrow part of the corridor. And as they paused there, I would have this thing, well, I guess it doesn't really matter, or it's not that important, and I guess I can just let it go. And it would just release and it would just disappear. And like, and the thoughts came until there was no thought. And they were done and the corridor dissolved away and it was just me in this vast expanse of the universe all around me. And it was like, and I mean, I had some more experiences, but I'll, I'll skip those, I get a little woo woo. And some of the stuff that goes on in your mind and your perception can be woo woo, but it was such a powerful experience of warmth, of being part and connected to the entire, all of everything um, that I made my mom take me the rest of the week. And ever since I've met, had a practice of meditation, I've, I've since just pursued all different kinds of meditations. And I guess what really inspired me more than anything um, to write this particular book as my first solo book was that before I ever got into coaching, my first self-help tool and my first tool to know myself because the world, life can get so chaotic, right? We have all these events, things to do, especially as, as entrepreneurs like you and I both are. Mm -hmm. There's so many hats that we have to wear and there's so many things and there's all this stuff going on all the time. And it's like, 
it's easy to forget that the events and the challenges in your life pass and the stuff that's going on, those things come and go, but you are always. And I feel like while meditation gave me a lot of calmness, it was the space where I got to sit with myself and remember who I was, like in the grand scheme of things. And calmness, I always joke that calmness is really like the side effect, but really it's about getting back to myself. And I feel like that's kind of at the crux of everything I do, whether it's coaching or hypnotherapy or everything. It's like whatever tool I have, whatever company or person or individuals in a company that I work with, I just feel like it's all about getting people to be their truest, best self, right? To be your true self. And I feel like the meditation is a foundational way to do that. And when I wrote the book, I wrote it so that meditation doesn't have to be spiritual. It can be for mental health. It can be for many different kinds of purposes, for shamanic journeying, for monks would do it for celibacy, mm -hmm. right? Like mm -hmm. there's so many different types of meditations for different purposes. And I really felt that where's the meditation for our busy society, for the people that don't have time, for the ADD brain, because like, even if you don't have ADD, I think our devices train us to be like that mm -hmm. and to, to, to dissociate us. And so it's like, okay, I believe that, and, and neuroscience is proving it now, mm -hmm. that your brain and your body want to meditate and we're built to do that. And I don't think that I was some special prodigy as a three-year-old. I think that I was exposed to something and nobody told me it was hard or difficult or that I wouldn't be good at it or it'd take years to learn. They just stuck me in a room and I did what came naturally. And I think that every single person out there who's ever laid on the grass or sat back on a swing and looked at the sky or had a bad experience and went to your room and lay down and stared at your ceiling for a little while and you sat with your emotions and you sat and you let your thoughts flow well after a time the feeling dissipated the thoughts stopped and it was just you in that space and time seems to fall away and it's in those moments that you genuinely have what's called, what i believe is called a flawless open mindfulness meditation and cognitive neuroscience calls this free association mm -hmm. space where you just allow your brain to go the mind wandering mode or the default mode. And it's actually one of the most constructive things that you can do. And you're not even forcing anything or doing anything. You're just being with yourself. And so I thought if you can have that on your own, but you get trained to say, stop being lazy, don't be a daydreamer and all these things mm -hmm. that people tell us or it's not really meditation unless you're sitting in some uncomfortable seat on the floor. But my thing is like, if your body and brain were built to do that, well, why not use those little tricks? And so I pulled everything from every meditation I've ever used, from hypnotherapy, from all of these things that will trigger your brain to drop into those brainwave levels where you get into the trance state that's resourceful to help your mind clear so you can have mental energy, clarity, and rest. That's right. kind of why I did this. And hence why I've invited you to this show <laughs> because <laughs> this is the Dream Receiver show. Yeah. And uh, I find even for myself, if I'm not in that meditative state, I can't even get the answers. I can't, I'm frantically looking outside my myself, phoning yeah. people and getting all messed up. Whereas you just let it come in through, through meditation. It's incredible. Uh, now, there's different types of meditation mm -hmm. also, isn't there? Uh, can you describe like why one would be better for somebody or somebody else or that type of... So, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to like do a gross oversimplification okay. because like, right. we, like I touched on before briefly, like we, none of us want to do shamanic type meditations because those take you out of your body, right? And if you're a healer or you're a visionary and you're a spiritual type of leader, maybe that's, that's really beneficial. Mm -hmm. But if you're an entrepreneur and you have to get stuff done, being spaced out is not <laughs> going to help you get anything done. Um, and so similarly, none of us need to be detached from reality because we have to interact with people. We have families, we have relationships. So there, the type of meditation we need, I believe, is one that helps us get calm, calm and clear. We want to be focused and energized so that we can do whatever it is that's there for us to do. And so I would oversimplify all of the meditations in existence into two categories. And it is a gross oversimplification, but I would say there's a workout type of meditation and a resting meditation. 
Mm. Okay. So the workout is where you have a discipline and you're actively training your brain. So there is a Buddhist mindfulness practice where you only focus on the tips of your nostrils okay. and nothing else. And that's all you're allowed to focus on. If your mind drifts, you have to come, come back to the tips of your nostrils. You cannot move. To me, that's like working out a muscle. Like your brain isn't exactly a muscle, but that's, that's working out a muscle. But then there are types of meditation that are more resting. Um, where, like I said, you could just stare at the ceiling or stare at the clouds and let things go by. And I think that those types of meditations, to me, I liken them to those old PCs where you had to defrag your computer mm -hmm. and everything, all the tiles move down and it gets organized and it like literally helps you organize your mind. And so I, I think that most of us who are very busy and inundated, let's face it, we don't sleep enough. And if we do sleep, it's usually not quality. And most people that I know that are entrepreneurs do not wake up feeling refreshed. They wake up feeling passionate and driven because they're living their life purpose, but they're not mm -hmm. necessarily have energized. And usually if we're not getting enough sleep, we're not filtering out um, through our dreams because our dreams are actually the mechanism by which our brain sorts out what's happened in our previous days and experiences. And so when you meditate, if you're not sleeping well, as you sit there and your mind starts to sort things out and you have little daydreams and you start processing things, that's actually your brain catching up. And so I believe that most people need to rest their brain before you attempt a disciplinary type meditation. And so I like meditations like TM, for instance, mantra-based meditations that allow your brain to flow because in in like something like a TM, they say your mind is like a room with a monkey in it and the monkey represents your thoughts, but the mantra is like a banana. And when you take the mantra, it's almost like the monkey will get like kind of, he's gonna eat the banana for a moment and maybe it'll keep running around again. But just for a second even sometimes, you just get that for like a second while you take the mantra. And sometimes maybe the monkey is like really hungry and it eats like 20 bananas and takes naps and you have one of those beautiful spaces. But the idea of allowing your mind to drift and not forcing it to, if it has a little day, daydream, you let it wander. And when you notice that you've drifted, you come back and you take your mantra. I find that those types of meditations allow our brains to decompress so we can actually clear out stuff so we can be more present and focused. Could you explain in more detail exactly what a uh, mantra is? Because I think a lot of our viewers might yeah. not know what that <laughs> Thank you. Means. Yeah, yeah. Of course. A mantra is a vibrational sound in the tradition of TM it doesn't have a meaning but when you are given a mantra you would speak to a master and they would ask you some questions about what are you looking for why are you doing this and they will actually give you a mantra that has a vibrational quality that suits your needs and they would sing it to you and as you receive it you take it in and when you take that mantra yourself I mean, sometimes it could stretch out, it could be short, it could be long, but that vibrational quality is supposed to wash through you. Like literally, like certain sounds can, like if you hear heard a gong or chimes, you can feel the sound in you. Maybe even if it's just a subwoofer and it's yeah. really loud, you can feel the sound. But this this idea of the sound moving through you is, is meant to physically also help you calm and, and in different levels. And so it's taken within you and they teach you how to, how to take that and I think that's a really beautiful experience but if you don't have the money because it is an expensive journey to to get a mantra and to do TM or to do meditations like that this is a way to just using your breath if you can open and close your eyes like there are so many meditations you're not restricted there's apps there's all kinds of things and resources out there now and guided meditations there are candle meditations chakra meditations mm -hmm. right like chakra is like the energy centers there's more oh, spiritual it's chakra, not shock or yeah it's chakra Ch how do i i usually say sh chakras like yeah so like the name ch ch chakra yeah chakras wow yeah. so i love the name of this book <laughs> i cheat at meditation why the name cheat okay the name cheat specifically because there are certain things that you're doing in the technique because there are, <laughs> there are certain things that you're doing in the technique 
that guarantee that you will drop into a certain level of trance, a certain level of brain waves. Whereas when you sit in general for a meditation practice, there's no guarantee of what depth you'll get to. Whereas there are certain things that I've put into the technique that help you go into a certain level of trance. And they're just based on your human biology. Certain things that you can do, like for instance, I threw in a little step where all you do is release your jaw and let it go completely slack because the truth is you can't releasing the jaw and letting it go slack releases one of the centers of the brain that enables worrying and rumination and the moment you physically release your jaw it's almost impossible to have worrying thought and if you think about it when you clench your jaw what are you doing you're worrying about something and so just by releasing the jaw you're able to do that and certain things like in the ancient tantric scriptures there's a there's a man who's done some work at mit and harvard and he's been going through these old tantric scriptures, not sex scriptures, but tantra in terms of like the practice of all awareness or love of all things and the spiritual journey. And they said that there was a routine of yogic poses that you could do that would lead you to enlightenment. And they kept talking about this pose that was called the pose of enlightenment or the seat of enlightenment. And there were no descriptions and they finally found a description and everyone realized why there was no description because it's the most obvious thing imaginable. The seat of enlightenment is sitting, spine straight, eyes closed or softened to the ground, jaw released, tongue floating in the mouth. That's it. Wow. That's it. And if you physiologically allow your spine to be as straight as possible, you're going to have better breath, right? Oh, and the more yeah, breath you have, sense. like the more your breath is flowing and to the, its best ability, the more you're oxygenating your blood, the better rest you have, the more physical rejuvenation you're getting while you're in a period of rest. And it's just, it should be healthier for you. Eyes softened, as your eyes are closed, you mimic what you would have like as you're falling asleep or in a rest state. And jaw released, jaw released literally means disengagement from worried or conscious thought. And so when you're in that state, just by mimicking that, they say that neurons that fire together, wire together. So you're literally um, instantly deactivating. And so part of the practice sometimes is re-releasing your jaw because sometimes we'll sit and you, your jaw tightens back up again. So re-release it. And it doesn't have to look pretty. I mean, it looks kind of silly to sit with your jaw open, but it's, you don't, you're meditating. You're not supposed to look good, right? It doesn't have to look good. <laughs> just has to feel feel peaceful and help yeah. you help you get back to yourself right so you can look good <laughs> exactly <laughs> I mean yeah. it, by being rested in that mm -hmm. uh, so I ha I use a lot of guided meditations mm -hmm. and I always want my husband to listen to it too <laughs> <laughs> and he always tends to fall asleep and yeah. I've done that too is it possible that the guided meditation can go into your subconscious mm -hmm. even though you're asleep so th that is oh yeah possible so that's it's okay to absolutely to what i would say is be careful of what you're listening to make sure like um guided meditations are a really personal thing so what you like mm -hmm. might not work for your husband because right? you've got to like the voice of the person, the cadence, but most importantly, you have to agree with what they're saying. Because if you don't agree with it, the actual beauty of your subconscious mind is that your subconscious mind won't take on things that you don't like. But mm. let's say you're dealing with certain insecurities and that person is using language that might actually fall into old patterns that you don't want to have. Mm. It's almost like consciously it's really important to choose the kind of language or the kind of process that you want. And I, I actually really like guided meditations because sometimes people listen to music that triggers trance, like they're called binaural beats or hemi-sync type music that syncs the hemispheres of your brains and forces you to drop into a trance state. And there is an aspect of that that can, without guidance, start to bring up things in a person that aren't, aren't good for you or aren't healthy that you're not ready to deal with. Wow, so yeah, I never thought about all those little things. <laughs> that's, really, that's why we have the expert here. Um, and uh, I saw you at TEDx as well. You did a great job on Thank stage you. and you got us all, we were all 
wired from all kinds of different <laughs> talks and and you had a, a really calm sense of that and I I recommend anybody to find that on YouTube and watch that because it, it's really really good as well as seeing a lot of your work on TELUS programming mm -hmm. and, and all of that and as a matter of fact just before I called you for the show <laughs> I needed to calm myself and I thought okay I'm going to see if there's something through the yoga yeah. thing and there you were mm -hmm. and I, I got saw you there with the candles and all of that um, so great book I, I want to go through it and, and, and read it all um, and find out the whole mechanics of cheating <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah definitely go through that so how can people our viewers um, get a hold of your book and reach you well uh, I know you can order them from myself mm -hmm. and it's on Amazon as well mm -hmm. so that's easy and literally I mean if you just go to farzanajj.com you can, or I cheat at meditation.com. I'm really easy to find. Great. Yeah, on social media, everywhere. Beautiful. Well, thank you so much, Farzana. Oh, thank for you. Coming out. Thank you for I having really me. Appreciate it. And such yeah. last minute, and and all of that. And how <laughs> all the stars. Well, everything are in aligned. <laughs> I know. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, and thank you for tuning in. And we are. Uh, you can get a hold of Farzana, like she said, and also you can go to my website, dianehume.net, uh, also the Dream Receiver within the Facebook as well. And uh, be sure to subscribe if you want to continue watching all of these great shows <laughs> of making your dreams into reality. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>